Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be discussing something that I get asked quite a lot. Laura, where do you get your toys and collectibles? How do you get such good deals? And where do you look for your stuff? Acquiring a big and decent sized collection is, you know, kind of like getting a good job. You have to be proactive, you have to put time, effort, and work into it. It's not something that's just gonna magically fall into your lap. Hunting and searching for items to add to your collection is almost more fun than actually having the item in your collection itself. And it's a bonus if you can get it at a great deal. But amassing a sizable collection can be very time consuming. However, with practice and as you refine your searching skills, you'll find that you'll be spending less and less time searching and more time enjoying your toys. So today, apart from letting my hair dry naturally because I hate blow drying it, I wanted the purpose of this video to show you guys, you know, how I find and acquire my toys and collectibles. I'll go through a couple of methods, but my number one method is online use sites. Online use sites is where I've acquired most of my items, not to mention some of my craziest and best items ever, like my $100 Darth Vader costume with lightsaber combo. <laughs> all for a hundred bucks. And I actually turned Darth Vader into a life-size mannequin with the help of my dad and some piping and stuff. It's also the place where I've acquired such things as my $20 Predator head mask, my giant size Ninja Turtle collection. I've gotten some pretty wicked stuff on you sites. So the sites that I use are Facebook Marketplace, Virage Sale, Let Go, Craigslist, Kijiji, and used insert city name. So there's things like used Victoria, used Nanaimo, etc., etc. I live in Canada, so these sites may not be possible popular where you are, but one awesome site that I believe is exclusive to just the US is OfferUp. That looks like a really, really great site. I would love to be able to have access to that, but alas, I am in Canada. What I like to do is have all these sites ready to go and saved on my device's home screen in a row. That way, if I'm in a bathroom or a waiting room, or I'm just super bored, I like to do a round of the pages. So here's Facebook Marketplace. Let's see what we got here. Um, and the two categories that I like to browse through within each of these U sites are number one, toys and games, and number two, antiques slash collectibles. All these sites, of course, will have these two categories that I always look in. But before you save these pages to your home screen, you want to set your location to where you are. A little trick I like to do is after I'm done looking locally, I like to set the location to the largest city that's near me to see if they have anything better. For example, Victoria is a much larger city that's next to me. It's about an hour and a half away, and I like to head down there every so often. So if I liked something down there, I'd message the person and I would say, hey, can I come pick it up Saturday because I'm coming down there this week? And on these use sites, don't be afraid to barter or anything. This head was going for about $30 Canadian, and I said, hey, would you take 20? I'm coming down there next week, so can I just grab this for 20 bucks? And they agreed to it. If they said no, they're firm on that price, at least you tried, or they may even throw a different price at you altogether and meet you in the middle. Any money you save in this hobby is a bonus because this this hobby is by no means an inexpensive hobby. <laughs> Another trick I like to use on these use sites is to broaden your search terms. So for example, you guys know that I'm a huge Jurassic Park fan. I'm always looking for Jurassic Park merchandise, but sometimes the seller actually doesn't know that they have a Jurassic Park item and instead they'll list it under dino or dinosaurs or sometimes even monster. I brought into my search to a city a whole province away, which is pretty far, and I searched the term dinosaur. I found this ad and I swiped to see all the pictures of the dinosaurs they had. And in the last picture, I saw this 2001 Jurassic Park animatronic Spinosaurus hidden within the lot. Which brings me to my next tip. Don't be afraid to ask if someone can ship something out to you. Sometimes simply covering the shipping cost is not really enough to motivate a seller to actually want to go through the effort of shipping something out. So usually what I like to do is I say, I'll throw in a few extra dollars there to say thank you for shipping the item out, which is what I did in this case. And one more thing about online news sites is some sites actually offer notifications. You can search Jurassic Park, Predator, Sideshow Collectibles, and save that search and enable notifications. So whenever someone posts a Jurassic Park item for sale in your area, you'll be notified immediately and one of the first people to get a chance at that item. Some use sites don't have the best notification options and some don't offer any whatsoever, so you'll want to look into that to save time for yourself. Okay, the next method is eBay. eBay is a fantastic resource, especially if you're looking for something specific. But the problem with eBay is that you really have 
have to know your prices. So let's say I'm interested in the 1988 Tonka Willow Eborsisk figure. I'll sort my results by pricing, by going low to high, and ooh, here is one on auction. So what I'll do is I'll set a reminder on my phone to check out this listing before it ends to see what the price is at. And if it's at an okay price, I may bid on it in the last minute. If you wanna be one of the first to market and notified of a specific item that pops up on eBay, eBay has a great notification system and you can actually save a search term, which will notify you when a new item is listed. When I'm buying things on eBay, I've been toy collecting for a very long time. So I kind of know the ballpark of prices and what I want to be paying and what I'd be willing to pay for an item. But sometimes if I'm unsure about an item and how much it should maybe be going for, I actually go to the sold and completed listing section when I search that item, just to see a ballpark of what these items are averaging when they are being sold. It's a great way to get an average pricing for an item that you're kind of unsure of. So here are some Boglins and what people are currently selling them for, but if we go to the sold and completed listings, we can actually see how much they are being sold for in a ballpark average. And just remember, if you're on the eBay US site and you know you're from somewhere like Canada, just keep in mind exchange rates as well as crazy shipping costs, not to mention duties and taxes, because sometimes those things add up really fast, almost even skyrocketing the price of that item to acquire it. So sometimes it's not even worth going on eBay whatsoever. The next place that I like to find my toys and collectibles are at toy fairs slash toy shows. Now, depending on where you live, you may have to kind of travel out farther because these don't really happen too often in smaller cities. So what I have to do is I have to travel to my next big city about an hour and a half away and there's a toy show there that happens twice a year. And again, don't be afraid to barter with people at these shows. These people come here, you know, to sell. Next method that I use to acquire my toys and collectibles is thrifting. Now, I don't really go out too much for the sole purpose of thrifting. I usually like to swing by to these, you know, secondhand stores, value villages, um, what else is there? Salvation Army, hospital auxiliary stores. I like to go to those places, you know, on the way to something. So I'm not kind of wasting too much of my time just doing toy stuff. I like to kind of make it a convenient trip. If you live in a smaller city like me, you may not get lucky that often at these places. So I tend to only pop in about, you know, once a week or once every other week. Obviously you can go to places, you know, like comic and toy shops and whatnot. But generally these prices here are kind of high and I feel it kind of takes away the fun out of toy hunting. Obviously these stores, you know, are fantastic resource because they have nothing but toys and collectibles, but I rarely find myself in these stores. And the last place where I acquire my things are from flea markets or swap and shops. So I guess in the UK, you guys kind of have the equivalent of um, a car boot sale or a car trunk sale or something. And it's where everybody kind of congregates together and sells things from their car. Here on the West Coast in Canada, we don't really have things like that. However, we do have garage sales and the odd flea market of depending on where you live. You know, if you're in a bigger city, you'll have more swap and shops and flea markets. Or if you live in a little city like me, you won't really get any of those at all. I don't do garage sales or anything like that anymore. That was essentially, you know, when you'd put it out in the paper and saying, oh, come to my place, I'm selling things there. It would require you to, you know, travel all the way across town from here to there and you'd see an ad and it would be like oh antiques and collectibles lots come see you won't want to miss it and you go there and it's this old lady that's selling birdhouses and teacups and you traveled all the way across town to check out those birdhouses so the best thing to do is obviously find you know the biggest congregation of people selling things whether that be a flea market a car boot sale a swap and shop whatever have you but the thing is if you're living in these smaller cities like me you don't really got any of those you got to go to the bigger cities but what I've noticed is that at these larger congregations now it's more so people selling handmade soaps handmade candles and jams and reselling women's purses and reselling jewelry so it's just like it's not really that culture anymore of you know oh selling selling all my junk selling it i want to get rid of it now it's like businesses that are coming to these swap and shops and flea markets so that's why i don't really go to these swap and shops anymore because they're not really that worth it so that my friends is the main methods that i use for acquiring collectibles for my collection so i hope this video was helpful to at least some of you i know there's a lot of you out there that are collectible warriors and have giant collections yourself but i do get asked this question quite a lot of times so I just thought it'd be nice to kind of have it all in one video. I know it may seem like a lot of work time and effort but this is a fantastic hobby and it's really really fun you know hunting for these items so if you do want to you know kind of amass a great collection with great stuff awesome things that you know you've been looking for all your life or just things that you're really interested in it does take time and money. So in the comments down below let me know if any of you have gotten any sweet deals lately on any items and what's your preferred method of toy hunting for your toy collection? You know, are you a thrifter? Are you a toy fair junkie? Or are you an eBay master? Let me know!
So please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I come with new videos every week. Come check me out on social media and help support the channel on Patreon. So thank you guys so much for watching and stay legendary. Pew, pew.